Welcome again to the SUP Podcast. This is episode 122. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me, virtually, we have the regular gang of Lawrence Deloach and Luke Trevisi with special guest, Isaiah Lorenzo. What's going on, guys? Hey. Happy to be here. Hey. What's up, y'all? Hey. hey. More Thanks like for covering for me, Isaiah. Appreciate it. Oh, yes. Thank you for that. But A, more like yay, because we're going to start just with the Kanye shit and get this shit out of the way. Yep. Uh, I didn't even – I only saw this one clip, Lawrence, that you sent us, but he did something in a bulletproof vest now that's saying he's the sheriff or some shit. Isaiah, I, I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if Luke saw all of this. Yeah. I, I missed this today. I was working all day. Uh, I just saw I just saw a little bit before we got on. Uh, yeah, it's a little vest. He had, a, he had a bulletproof vest that said security on it. Oh, security. That's what it said. Okay. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool looking vest, I will say. Um, <laughs> We're going to break down his, his fit from his campaign. Of course, trail. bro. We're going to talk about the fit first. Dude, his hair looked amazing. I'll say that right now. Whoever his barber is, fucking shout outs to him. Like, he's bringing back, like... <sighs> Vintage, uh, fucking Beyonce should have won this award. Kanye hair, it's great. Uh, that being said, he cries in the in the uh, in the rally. Uh, he cries. He says he almost killed his daughter. We're talking about his abortion. Like he he almost aborted North. Wait, I didn't. Oh my god. Yep, and he starts there. Uh, okay. And then he goes on to say, if Kim and I divorce, it doesn't matter because I got North. And it was like, bro, what? <laughs> I mean, he's pro life. I guess he's going with the, very pro life. Gonna, very pro life. So, and then, uh, and then the biggest thing was the Harriet Tubman thing that he said, where he said that's that, the that's the clip that Lauren sent to us, right? Which that, I didn't even really process or try to understand because the second he mentioned Harriet Tubman, I was like, I brought him out. I I mean, I looked into it like immediately after he said Harriet Tubman did not actually free the slaves. She made him go work for other white people. Um, And I I don't know where he's I don't know where he's reading this. Like, you know, I like Kanye. But if I was in his camp, I'd be like, you know, man, like I trust you. But I just I just disagree on this one. Yeah, it's uh, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But the problem is, it's not more embarrassing than anything else that's happening. I mean, it's, it's all embarrassing, bro. It yeah. is all, you know. <laughs> to me, I think that, I think, Con- see, Kanye, Kanye is um, an example of, I think, nuanced opinions run amok. Like, I, like, so, like, there's an argument for things like, see, when I hear him say something like Harriet Tubman just made uh, the slaves work for, for, for white people or something like that, I hear something like, I've heard uh, arguments for the Negro League's integration. Like we had black ownership. There was black teams owned by black people that hired black people. So a lot of that was a lot of good things. And then when you integrate, it kind of changes the dynamic. If you look at Major League Baseball now, every, you know, all 30 team owners are all like old white dudes. So like, I can see where somebody would make an argument for like maybe integration shouldn't have happened that way. So like, I kind of hear that, but it's like, that's not what he's saying. Like, no, like it's not the same thing. I feel like it's just like it's like a nuanced opinion, just gone all the way in the wrong direction. So that's that's how I see it. But great designer, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't understand how many publicists he must go through in a year. He doesn't have a publicist. No, you know that. Okay. Yeah, there has I'm, to be I'm someone sure. at least, quote unquote, handling him, and they're doing it poorly. No. I don't, you know, I think it's handlers at this point. I don't, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's just not, it's embarrassing. It's fucking embarrassing. Yeah, I think he has a lot. The thing is, it's weird because he's insanely rich. So when it comes to hand, like, how do you handle someone who's worth a billion dollars? And also your likelihood, your livelihood is dependent on, on yeah. whether or not this person likes you. So I, I don't, I think it's way past that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just looking forward to this album that's not going to come out. That's the only thing I could do with this guy. Don't he you tweeted, say that. Don't you fucking say <laughs> that. Please. He tweeted and deleted the Donda, now it's called, track list. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I guess. Yeah? Yeah, I, I don't know. He could drop it tomorrow for all we know. It was supposed to be the 24th. Today is the 19th. So it's supposed to be in five days, according to the tweet and delete. But. Mm-hmm. 
And if it does come out in five days, uh, go on our Discord and tell Chris that he's wrong. <laughs> yes. Come tell One me that I'm wrong. my favorite pastimes. I mean, <laughs> that's the only thing that I'm really looking forward to hit with from Ye right now. Because everything else is clown shit. And Dr. Dre has nothing to do with his political campaign. So I have no interest, really. <laughs> uh, Detox coming soon. <laughs> yes. Did you, did you guys see that video that like resurfaced a while ago of Dr. Dre and every like he has like a new pair of Air Force Ones for every day? I think we talked about this. Oh right? yeah. yeah. I don't know if we talked about it on pod, but yeah, he has a, some uptowns for every like a new pair every day. So he spends a hundred dollars every day. Seven hundred dollars a week on just Air Forces. Yeah. Good for him. What a waste of money. <laughs> It is. It is. You're right. But if there was one shoe that you would buy every day for the rest of your life. Definitely not an Air Force One. I, I'm sorry. I think it's an overrated shoe. I mean, it's great. It's classic. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm not even going to get into it. I, I think it's a better way to spend seven hundred. I mean, a hundred dollars a day. A bunch of other shit. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm anti-hype, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd go Japanese sandals. Those wooden sandals. A new pair every day. Because I'm gonna stain them. Some, you can even go with some with some technology. Like if he spent one ten, yeah, like one ten, you get some. You get like a, re, a pair of reacts. Like you just get so much. But like it's, that's nice. His argument that's is for 19, technology. Yeah, get some that's boost. 19, get some boost in your shit. No, I was talking to L about this like recently. It like I just think that like we're a, a lot of the sneaker game is caught up in nostalgia, and I'm I'm a victim of it too. And I realized it because I bought a pair of trainer threes. And I was like, man, this shoe can't, it doesn't even like work for feet. It just like yeah. the technology has gotten so much better as far as like, and you used to wearing like updated shoes, like React, like like cushioning, like they, they've come a long way as far as like, like Nikes and even Adidas and Boost. Like you go to these retros and it's like, man, they, they really try to make it like it was. And like, it's, it's like when you, when you look at people that wore Converse and you're like, people used to ball in this? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, I think we caught up in a lot of nostalgia and like, it's really kind of made me make a decision to sell a lot of my older retros to just be like, it's not really practical anymore. Yeah, it's true. All right, well. <laughs> what, El, what do you got? Oh, no, I was going to say uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying Dr. Dre is wrong. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he, yeah. I I just want to get so far away from this Kanye political thing. I don't know. <laughs> this is, this is just a nightmare. I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, well, let's let's get into the news for the week, guys. Um, what do we have? We got Grateful Dead uh, SBs. We're just continuing this fucking train. <laughs> of uh, from what I, uh, I I saw somewhere, I don't know how true it is, but these are uh, more limited than the uh, uh, Chunky Dunkies yeah. uh, uh, Ben and Jerry's were. Um, we're at that. How's uh, that possible? Exactly. Well, because the three colorways, I think they divvied it up based on like uh, that. that makes so, sense. I don't know. I mean, the SB shit is just getting real. I mean, we've covered it to almost it's complete. Like, the SB shit is just getting really out of hand. And, and part of it's probably the nostalgia, like you're saying, know. Isaiah. But I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people just see the potential in the markup. They see the hype and they see the markup they can get out of it because it's the cheapest hype shoe right now right well, now oh i think nike when we talk about it it's just you know they, they're just uh they're putting the shoe in the right people's hands the the green pair was uh kylie jenner put the green pair on her instagram and and it just opens up a whole new wave of people who are going to be interested in the shoe so yeah. now you know so now you got kylie fans you got sb fans you got grateful dead fans you got fucking resellers you got everyone wanting a limited pair of shoes and the thing about it is you know the the orange pair was at a ftc san francisco mm -hmm. um which they had a email raffle and you know and i'm not sure how many winners there were but it probably was definitely uh very few few and far between um and then um and then now you have the green pair which are being raffled at local skate shops so you already know how that goes when you have local yeah. skate shops involved uh, it's mm. very few, you know, not many, and, and how many are, are legit fair ones, uh, raffles, and then you have the yellow pair, which are going to be on sneakers uh, on Saturday, as well as skate shops, so 
uh, this is just more of a recipe and, and for uh, a lot of disaster for people who are who really want the shoe. The the sad thing is the people that really want this shoe, similar to the Chunky Dunks, it, they have no idea how sneakers work, and they do, the people who want the Grateful Dead shoes that actually like Grateful Dead don't. They have had one pair of sneakers for forty years. It's mm -hmm. true. I was gonna say, do you think there's a lot of crossover there? I don't think so. I don't think there's uh, a lot of sneaker head crossover so. for Grateful. Bro, really, I mean, Grateful Dead fans. Deadheads think... are wild. <laughs> I, I don't I think, think Deadheads uh, like. Sne I don't know, sneakers really. I don't know. You you would say you're like yeah. Well, how many Grateful Dead fans? But you also have to look at certain. Uh, like I remember when MF Dooms or you know or even Ben and Jerry's. Like you have people who are very loyal to a brand that are definitely are going to add to it. So yeah, it may not be a lot of Grateful Dead fans, but there are some Grateful Dead fans who fucking will want this piece of history. Mm -hmm. So you know, mm -hmm. so you you have things like that, and um, and I think and Nike <clears throat> knows how to you know hype it up. It just seems like every every release you know has kind of gone up in terms of like the way people you had, like I said, from Strange Loves to Travs to you know Ben and Jerry's to now here, uh, we got fucking we, we still haven't really uh, got word of a release on the Strawberry Coughs. Which I'm yeah. sure that's gonna be that's gonna probably be even worse. Uh, yeah. we, we have the you know the Jordan uh, pack. So they they Nike is no, they're 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 at that level right now where and this is like I said this is the Jordan one effect man where every you know 2013 you know people were going fucking insane for Jordan ones, and I feel like this is you know good luck on Saturday. That's the best way I can put it. It's also, right. I mean, I guess it doesn't, it doesn't hurt it that like the shoe's shape is just so classic and similar, you know. I, it's like, I apologize. It's, it's Friday, the twenty fourth. I apologize. It's not the twenty uh, fifth. So, uh, but yeah, good luck. I got my crying face ready already. You know, I got it. I mean, I, 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 I I've said this before, like, like hanging out with you guys, man. I think that really, like, for me, like, I'm gonna try. Cause it's like, I, you know, you, you might as well be dumb to not, it's a cash out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's like, it's going to happen whether you like, are you, whether you buy into it or not, like whether you, you just, sort of, so I, I mean, would I wear it? I would wear that. I'm, I don't know what, what are you guys favorite uh, grateful out of all the colors? I love the green pair. I think that the green pair with the, with the brown like fur, I think that's the dopest one. Like what, if you could, you know, pick to wear, like which, which, which one y'all like? Uh, the green pair is probably the most wearable. The yeah, yellow, I would agree. The yellow is nice, but uh, I can't see myself practically wearing that bright of a yellow. You know, I could. I think that yellow is. Uh, I think all of them are, are nice. I, I, I think the green is the most wearable, but I think the the yellow and the orange are like they're uh, they're both man dope man. They're all three. Yeah, of them. I'm. A I'm on, I mean, I'm on a tie that wave this summer. So like, I mean, I know probably a trend to come and go. A You've been on a couple like, things this, this summer, Isaiah, hey. which we'll get to later. <laughs> man, whatever, man. All right. So, you know, I'm wearing tie dye shorts right now. So, nice. Um, Are you going to show us those too? <laughs> nah, man. We're just going <laughs> to keep it neck up. <laughs> oh, just doing I the mean, silent laugh. That's that shit is that's very funny. I can't wait to talk about that. But um, I don't, I I don't know how we're gonna take back like the we we talked about this in a previous episode, Lawrence. I think you were the one that kind of like pointed it out uh, and made it clear is that like Nike is telling us what's hype now instead of us all discussing what the hype shit is years later. Mm -hmm. Um, until we stop letting that like listening to them and start letting them tell us what the shit is that it's just going to get out, so out of hand. I, I it, those shoes not only are supposed to be for actual deadhead fans, but you have Kylie Jenner, who's probably never listened to them a day in her life. Now introducing them to a bunch of 16 year old girls who will have no idea what those bears are, but they, it's a fuzzy shoe that is cute. So they're like, all right, boyfriend, get it for me. But boyfriend also wants it. And the dad also wants it because he's a deadhead. So now you've got three family members in the house wanting one dumb shoe. Well, I've talked about that in the past. Like I said, I've talked about that in the past. We, we go from, you know, 
how good is it or how hype or how good is a shoe when you know you got everyone wanting uh the shoe and, and there's not many shoes that are that transcendent in terms of being able to get you know so many people involved but i feel like just the the marketing on these the 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 fuzzy bear you know it, it just it's gonna bring it's you know and then a lot of people don't know how skate shops work so now you know now yeah. obviously the skate shop and you know we talked about this skate shops now you know they they're hot again if that right. makes sense mm-hmm. you know the skate shops are always people aren't really unless you're like a guy who goes in there for decks and you know all that shit you know and, and you know t-shirts but when are, when are skate shops really you know when when there's a hot release they get thousands of calls and then they you know then it's like if if a skate shop can fucking pay their rent for three months by you know backdooring or whatever, I mean it's, you got to charge it to the game at this point, man. Yeah, I mean I don't think I don't think it's anything new. Like uh, to to what you were saying, Chris. Like I don't like you're like well now they tell us what's cool. I mean how many people really listened to Three Feet High and Rising that bought De La Soul Highs when they came out in two thousand five? You know what I mean? Like this is not anything new. Like. If, especially if you anything by like me, like L, like you know, all of us, like we've been in the in the game long enough and loved shoes and and SBs and I, all of us here have appreciated them. So like, man, this is nothing new. It's it's just it's just things that are coming around again that maybe I didn't think would come around so fast. Like I couldn't see like I probably stopped wearing like really paying attention to SBs and moved on to other things. I don't know, probably around two thousand nine, maybe. And like yeah. it just you know it seems like look ten years later, look you know look 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 was 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 popping and now generally I'm pretty sure y'all talked about this um thousand times too general release dunks are going for four hundred dollars three hundred dollars like what like the whole market of too? dunks SBs dunks that like, that sh- that shoe shape the value of it has just gone up by at least double from the resale right. value. Um, but no, you, you know what? I'm gonna have to wait. Hold on, Al, just for a second. I'm gonna have to say. I, it's not – this is a whole different plane of things. It's it's not the same. With like You know those random Instagram accounts that just, like, post sneaker content all the time? And then yeah. they'll have, like, the, here's the retail price of the shoe that's not out yet. And then they have the resale value under it when it was just announced last week. Right. They're telling us what it's going to resell for before we even get to decide what it resells for. Yeah, the uh, – originally when, when they were showing pictures of the Grateful Deads, they said the yellow pair was going to be, like, 350 to $500. That's what they said resale was going to be. And mm. no fucking way. How, how, do they even, how can you even determine what the resale value is when it's not even out? That's just speculation. Oh, no, speculation. but like, it's weirdly accurate. Mm. Well, I'm sure. Like, I mean, y'all were talking about this with Dior's too, right? Like, y'all were talking about this with Dior's. Like, there's going to be those people that jump for that resale because they can. Mm-hmm. And then we get to, you get to see eight, eight, ten months after a release what the value really is and what people are willing to pay for. I think Elle made that point on last week's episode or something like that, like, or two weeks ago, where it's like, yeah, you could hold on, but, like, most people are going to get that, try to go for that quick grab, like, right after, like, what? Because people are predicting these, these these things, so I don't know. You, you thought, I mean, it, it just seems like every, with, with this shoe, with, with SBs, it just seems like every resale is just getting worse and worse. When I look at the uh, the orange pair right now, and remember that's exclusive to a skate shop in San Francisco, you know the the lowest ask for the orange pair is thirty five hundred dollars. Jesus. So you're looking right now, and then even when you go to the the yellow pair, which seems to have which is going to be the most widely released pair, where the lowest ask is nineteen hundred, and this is pre. Obviously, pre skate shops, pre uh, sneakers, but if you really do the math, I mean, once you know th- those shoes get in the hands of people, maybe we'll, we'll see, maybe a a thousand dollar drop, maybe if that, maybe yeah. you know, depends on how limited the shoe is. So if, if they're pre, if they're five days out asking for nineteen hundred dollars on a shoe, and we've like maybe it, I'm sure it won't drop a thousand dollars. Maybe it'll drop maybe you know five six hundred dollars. So we're still going to be at four figures for the for the yellow pair the 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 green pair 2000 is the lowest that so these shoes already have you know i can't 2020 i i can never i've i've been in the same game for years i can't remember where shoes just automatically these shoes are jumping out of four figures already it's bananas 
Yeah. Yeah, I think also <laughs> what we, we haven't talked about in this conversation too is that um, like even comparing like something like a, a musical artist collab, like uh, like three feet high, like like the De La Soul Highs when they first came out, mm-hmm. like there wasn't Instagram then, you know, there yeah. wasn't ev- all the stuff that we have then. Like flexing has become so much a part of the lexicon of shoes. So it, you know, it's just a whole another dynamic. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I, I don't know how long like purists can be in the game if stuff keeps going like this. I mean, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, like before there was, I mean, there was a time when it was all, if you wanted to find out about shoes, you'd find out on a, on a forum, right? And it was like a shitty HTTP style mm-hmm. fucking Nike fo- talk. Exactly. Nike talk, sneakerhead. You'd find out about a release. You go to your local store, you'd pick up a pair. That's it. Because like, but now because of the internet, everything's just extrapolated to the point where everybody is aware of these shoes. Because back then it was, a, it was a secret society is what it was, you know? If you wanted, like, if you had a, a thing that you wanted, like a pair of shoes that you wanted, you could get them because nobody else knew about them. But now because of, um, because of uh, how the culture has changed and how we have like, you know, NBA players wearing great sneakers go like walking into the games and shit, it's just, it's slowly it's kind of entered everybody's mind well i think that's that's a big thing too i mean we're talking yeah. pre, even we're talking you know 2000 and what if you want to say 2002 or 2001 like it was just a complete the the biggest re- releases were jordans mm-hmm. you know for the most part and and things were you know like you said if you knew you knew but now the way the obviously sneakers have evolved and, and, and limited edition and even, you know, uh, Nike SB is what, you know, basically almost 20 years old. It's not even 20 years old, basically. Right. So, you know, so it's kind of like we, we don't have we didn't have the, the Internet. We didn't have the social media. We didn't have the, the influences. I mean, if you look at, you know, the rappers, you know, who I mean, who what were they? What were they pushing? In, you know, 15, 20 years ago, throwback jerseys. Yeah, and like echo. Yeah, you know. Well, this dunk, this whole this dunk thing is all it's all offsets fault. I think I I think I really think uh, it was uh. I don't think it was all. Offset. I don't think offset. I don't think I. I mean, once again, we, we we're gonna go to the root. It's it's definitely Travis Scott. We're gonna oh, yeah, honestly, yeah. honestly yeah. say Travis Scott yeah. was the one, and and whether it was you know Nike, you know whether it was you know them kind of you know pushing Trav or Trav or the other people getting in Trav's ear like hey rock this. But once Trav really started, you know, wearing SBs, it just like we've had this this bubble, this this fucking this rise that people it's 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 not sustainable, but it's it's just up there right now. I, I want to well, and now you got them just doing Jordan colors, right? That was now we're gonna have though. we're gonna have Chicago dunks. Which is the, I guess, like the pinnacle of like what this moment could be. Following the MJ doc, following the SB hype, they're like, all right, let's just give them Jordan colorway in the SB. Damn, do y'all remember J Packs though? J Packs used to say go J-Pax. for a hundred. They used J Packs used to go for a hundred. Like even even when SBs were like at the highest, I think I remember the highest I ever paid for a shoe was I bought a pair. I bought a pair. A second pair of De La Soul highs for like two seventy five, brand new, and mm-hmm. I was like, I remember thinking to myself like, oh man. And at that time, with you know, SBs were pretty popular with that market. J Packs were a hundred dollars. Stussy, Stussy Dunks, the pink and brown ones. Yeah, those which were are fire. under. Those were those were great shoe. Those yep. were so cheap for a long time. Even like after you couldn't get them in skip shops anymore, people would sell them for like really cheap because it was like that pink and brown. Nobody really wanted it. Now it's like now pink and brown because of Travis too with the colorway with the Jordan one highs. Like I feel like anything that has like kind of that pink or neutral colors really hot. Like you know like that that, that that's like up there too. But it's like man, J packs J packs were cheap, <laughs> but now uh-huh. forget about it. Luke, you really want those Jordan SBs though, right? I do. I like them a lot. I like the I like the fat tongue on my Jordan lows. I appreciate it. You know, those are actually I could do those, and it's mostly because of the colorway. But I could do those. I'm not even really a low guy, like I've said. But yeah, I I'm gonna definitely try to get a pair of those too. But I've got the crying face, you know, in in the in the background <clears throat> just in case. 
So, so Chris, you basically you, you mainly uh still a, like a bot boy, right? You like mainly just like looking out for stuff like that, or do you get into the Nike stuff or what? No, yeah, of course, a little bit, but a pro- part of the problem is is that like I and it's part of it's partly comedy's fault, but like you you catch wind of like what a, what your brand is, and then like comedy tells you to like kind of lean into it. So like I was already a Bach boy, but then I was already I got automatically associated with Reebok the second people would like think of me. They'd be like, "Oh, he wears the pumps, right?" So yes and no. Like I'm probably gonna be a Bach boy for life just because I, if I look weird without Reeboks on, I'm honestly. stuck with I'm the Ewing guy. I yeah, fucking, you're Ewing I guy. I pigeonholed myself too early. Fuck. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. No I, I keep that stuff around. Like, no I mean, rings. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. That's, oh, that's true. No rings. What did Patrick Ewing do to you, man? He was a great player. I tell you what he lost did to me. every I year. I tell you what he did to me. A finger roll. That's what he did to me. He should have dunked it. And uh, I'm just. I <laughs> Lawrence that did a little smart. For the rest of my life. I mean, because L knows. L knows that feeling. I was in my living room. Man. I was in my living room, sitting Indian TP style on the living room, watching that, watching the overtime. Like, come on, man. Gotta, you gotta yeah. dunk that. Yep. So, <laughs> all right, but look, listen, I I give it to anybody who really, you know, they just, just the anti hype, man, for real. Man, so, rock those Ewings, bro. Rock, rock them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> rock those Ewings, yo. Um, My real problem a- is that Ewings don't really look good during the summer on me. Yeah. They're, they're not uh-huh. really a summer shoot. They're great. They're great, like, alternatives to Tim's. In the winter, they're fantastic. <laughs> you put on a pair of those in the in the summer, it's the fucking weirdest thing on the planet. Because I got, like, tiny legs and then these gigantic shoes around them. Yeah, because you wear the same size as me, and you're you're considerably shorter than me, so I can imagine. Yeah. Like, we're, we're the same size. But, L, so, I, so do you, when you see a release, like, of course we all try, but do you, when, because my goal is, like, if I see something like that, if, whether I like it or not, I'm like, well... I I rationalize it with myself that if I get it, I'll use it towards more sneak. Like I'm not trying to bastardize the game. I got a job. Like I do whatever it is I want to do. I but I because I love sneakers, I'll use it toward other sneakers that I actually want that are Brit. Like because I don't I don't want to be associated with the type of dude that wants to wear a Grateful Dead shoe. I don't like Grateful Dead. I can't name three songs. Like I don't want to to do that. So like. Me personally, I'm gonna to try to get like other stuff that I want. Like, do you look at it like that, L? Like, you try to like, just like, ah, right, yeah, I'll try. But then, like, I'm not gonna keep them. I'm gonna to try to get something else. Uh, it depends. I mean, that's happened to me in the past where I, you know, where I purchased something and then I said, time for me to get rid of this so I can get something better uh, or something that I really like. Um, it, it's all. It all depends on the shoe, the situation. You know, there's a lot of different variables. I mean, if I do get a pair of Grateful Dead, um, obviously, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I have to see the shoe in hand, and I have to really say, all right, if these are going for, if this $100 shoe is going for $1,500, I mean, it's one of those things where it's almost like, yeah, you do have to get rid of it, you know, because I, I feel like, you know, come on, at this point, I mean, these things can only go... I mean, down. How I many? How many people are really gonna? You know, if you see a uh, opening for fifteen hundred dollars, how many people are really gonna be willing to go for you know, you know, fifteen hundred? Because before you know it, it's on to the next for people. That's also true. But like again, if you wait until you'd have to wait till SBs come back around, and then if you're holding onto that pair for that long, you'd be cashing out huge at that point. Well, we yeah, all know right. SBs don't retro, so I mean, you know that that we don't see a, we've never seen really a retro of an SB. We may have seen a, a low or a high version of you know the original, but um, they're I gonna think, they're gonna start retroing. I think eventually, yeah. I think eventually. I mean, think about it, dude. We've we've talked about the old models that like we now would hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next yeah, like Marvel movie, stuff, yeah. even if he's dead, Iron Man, SBs. Like, I mean, come on. Spider-Man I mean, that's the best Man, example baby. of me. Spider Man's. Mm. Yeah. If I, I, if I win a pair of these, I'm probably going to sell them and get a pair of baby bears. That's what like I would that. do. Hmm. 
But let's I get off SP every, though. I, we can talk about SP forever. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, we can talk about SP uh, SPs forever. But let's get off and let's talk about uh, the future. As I share oh. my screen, I, I was gonna say okay, yeah, yeah, that's. No, they Ooh. literally made the mag lows now though too. That's oh. clean. I have not seen these. That is, those are really clean. These are the these second are like, adapts. Yep, yeah, adapt yeah. Uh, version two basketball shoe. Uh, I'll tell you this: as a person who uh, who who plays ball a lot, uh, these I tried these on and they are uncomfortable, heavy as shit. <laughs> uh, but you know, obviously, you have the nostalgia factor of you know the mad colorway. Yeah. And it gives me uh, Red October vibes with that back. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean you mean like Easy Two, like vibes? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. That, the Red October mention was just for Lawrence, so he can have a nostalgic memory for a second. You remember yeah. where you were? <laughs> <laughs> I remember where I was, man. I it's, mean, it's just... oh, okay. No, go, go, Lawrence. I feel like you've been getting cut off a lot. You, you gotta really step on us and plow through here. No, nah, I'm letting you guys do your thing, man. You know, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm just letting you guys, you know, lead the ship this week. Uh, I feel like it's tough with, with these. I mean, because it, it's a basketball shoe and a lot of people aren't indoor hooping right now. So I feel like, uh, you know, it's but it's a, it's a mad colorway. So people are going to fucking flock for them. Uh, I just feel like the shoe itself isn't, I'm not a big fan of the shoe itself. <clears throat> yeah, I feel you. I am a fan that they like, at least acknowledging because we were joking around when these like first came out they're like, we're like oh mag lows and like the hyper adapt like oh air mag air mag low you know what i mean like so yeah. at least at least it's nice for people who like couldn't actually get a pair of mags to mm -hmm. i mean there was those hyper dunks from way back in the day but they weren't even close to looking like actual mags so these are cool i like these i think i think these are really clean i i i also tried these on because i was considering um buying a pair uh, at the even at the 400 dollar retail mm -hmm. um i i i think i would have bought a pair if the employee at the nike store wasn't so like just like bad it was just really bad, real bad customer service and it was it was kind of an impulse purchase anyway and i just think the way they were handling the shoe at the time Cause I wanted to try it on and I wanted them to like bring it out and try like see the whole thing. And it was at the time it was Nike Soho and you had to, cause they had the basketball court up there. So you had to like put on a shoe that like everybody else was putting on while playing ball. Oh. And I was just like, bro, this is a lot like for me, like, I know it's a basketball shoe, but because it's so unpractical to play ball in, like I was going to use it as a lifestyle shoe. And like, I was just like, mm yeah like nah and i just ended up never like really coming back to it plus i'm not a huge fan of icy soles because i don't like the way they eventually look um but like this colorway is is clean as hell man the the the, the green yellow red orange little little lights at the front like that or, or not yeah. lights but like that little detail right there. i think it looks dope um i probably won't pop for that 400 but if that, they, I, think, uh... I think it's i think it's good if they release these close to Halloween, I guarantee there's going to be a lot of people just buying these to be Martin McFly. Like, get that any excuse, they'll, they'll just like try to, you know what I mean? That price tag, a lot I of Martin McFlys this year. I think regardless of what I think, the color, the that colorway will always uh, sell out. I feel like because it's it's the mad colorway. The other the other shoe, it's definitely more of this one right here, the black one. Uh, yeah. It's more it's it's a basketball shoe. Uh, I think a lot of it was also the marketing and the way it was going to be presented was also hindered due to the fact of the NBA season being uh, postponed back in March. I remember when uh, John Morant from the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, he wore those. And, uh, and you know, definitely the shoe had a little, you know, a little bit of a buzz. But once again, the way of the season was abruptly halted. It's a heavy shoe uh, yeah. for basketball. Uh, people playing basketball, they're very heavy. Uh, and obviously it's because of all the motorized stuff inside of it, but, uh, I, I can see the OG colorways or the non Marty McFly colorways going on sale. Just like right now, if you go to, uh, if you go to sneakers or Nike plus, if you go to Nike plus and you're a member, there's a member exclusive sale and the original adapt, uh, basketball ones are on sale for two seventy nine. So, um, you know, so you kind of you're you're like, and and they're not even selling out of two seventy nine because once again, 
It's not a practical shoe. It's not a lifestyle shoe. It's definitely one of those if you're a basketball player, if you're a guy and, and because, you know, indoor runs are, are, are done for now and we don't know when the indoors are going to be able to open them. And it's not a shoe that you want to wear on, on, on the pavement, you know, on the street. So, it, it, like I said, it's, it has a tough sell and the, the high price point of a sneaker when you can get, obviously, sneakers with, uh, with, that you can use a lot better for a, a, a third of that price. You know, it causes people to really think about it. Yeah. But the McFly is going to sell out. Yeah, for sure. Here's the move. But the, wasn't there a BB? There was a, a McFly colorway of the. You said that, those are the ones on sale right now, right? On, on the Nike, like I think the was, isn't this a McFly colorway? It, there was a McFly colorway in the adapt, uh, the the first adapt basketball, and that right. obviously once again, it, it the colorway is is such an easy way to sell out. You put on an auto lace and shoe, but the other colorways, you know, are it's a str- it's a tough sell, man. You know, granted, I mean, you know, it's a tough sell. And when it's a specific shoe, I feel like, you know, it's, it's a sneaker that people, you play ball in. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? And, and, and how many people, it, I feel like a lot of people are not going to buy $300 sneakers, especially if their game isn't 300 Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people, the casual person is not. My game is not worth $400. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Way. No, your game is worth Ewing. Yeah, exactly. It is worth $85 <laughs> on Big resale. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, you know, so that's, uh, I think that's an interesting thing to me, too. So, Here's Ooh, what were you going to say? The, okay. The move with these shoes is if, like, John Morant wore them for, like, the first half of the game and then took them off and then wore a different pair of Nike shoes at the second half of the game, he would be fucking blazing through everybody. Like, it's Dragon Ball Z and he's taking off the weights, bro. Oh, well, I like, thought. Okay, I thought you were gonna go. Uh, it's like he time traveled to to the other. Okay, never mind. But I like that too. That's good. I'm just saying uh, that's the move. You you start off the first half of the game. It's like John Morant's looking a little slow in this game. Uh, maybe it's those those shoes he's wearing. <laughs> Second half of the game puts on some fucking Lebrons and it's like pow 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 pow. Game. You get the competitive edge. All right, Ja. I hope you're listening. He's a he's an avid listener. I call him Ja. We're friends. <laughs> It's actually friend of the pod. Yeah. Friend of the pod. That's right. Friend of the pod. He's just too busy to come on, you know? Uh, I, um, <laughs> I'm excited about the uh, the NBA uh, uh, coming back. We have uh, – we're, we're seeing now with sports where uh, the NFL, they, uh, they had a, a lot of the major players this morning uh, sent out a message, you know, talking about safety – which they're very concerned about, and and, and they uh, they organized it well. It's called We Want to Play. Uh, they start Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, o, OBJ, Odell Beckham. You know all those guys were involved in it. Uh, we see now with Major League Baseball, they're you know they're starting trying. The NBA is in the bubble. Uh, do we see sports this year, guys? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's practical. I think what Russell Westbrook got COVID like last week. Mm-hmm. I just I don't think I think it's just gonna you when you put people in a bubble like that all it takes is just one guy to have it right and then yeah. everybody's got it it's it might come back for a little bit but they'll probably have to shut it down I I think personally when you have um, until there can be some kind of test that you can know within like 20 minutes you know like then maybe it is when we get closer to where you could have some kind of like normal like setup with sports again, but like, like already you see with the with the Orlando bubble, or, you know, for the NBA, like there's dudes that are leaving because they got family issues or whatever. But like the second you go out, you know, especially when you got cases spiking at different places in the country, and you know, then it comes to like the the whole question of civil liberties or oh you can't tell me I can't do this because of my family and because of this and like what people value as important. Um, is different. I just don't. I mean, I thought out of any of the major sports that if we were going to see anything and the, the closest thing, it would be football. Because I think that, like, I think football personally uh, was because it was already on the decline. They need it more. Like they need. Like they. I don't think they can afford to like. It's already a short season. I mean, they get a lot of viewers and they get make a lot of money. But like, I mean, baseball makes the most money because they have the most games and like the longest like season. 
you know, and then you got basketball, which also has a really long season. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what happens with this whole bubble thing is because it's a, it's a weird way to play sports. It's, like, like It's not yeah. going to work. It can't work. Like yeah, you said, yeah, like one, one, one person, like, do you think, honestly, anyone can tell LeBron what to do? Yeah. That's LeBron James, bro. If he's like, I'm leaving, then he's leaving. No one can stop him from going. The snitch hotline, though, is very funny. The snitch hotline? What is this? Yeah. No, it's when if you see a basketball player outside the bubble, you're supposed <laughs> to call the hotline and be like, yo, there's Russell Westbrook well, over here. I brunch. hate – I, I kind of hate that it's being branded like that. Like, because I was watching ESPN and they were talking about that. And, like, I think people are really misconstruing what snitching is. Like, man, snitching is when I'm doing something with you and when it comes to my best interest, I tell on that, like, even though I was involved. When something affects me uh, and, like, everything else, like, that's responsibility. It's not snitching. Like, if somebody fucking killed my mother, I, I want you to tell me who did that shit so, I mm-hmm. can, so they can, like, pay. Like, that's mm-hmm. not what snitching is. Snitching is when, like, if we both doing crime and then I get caught and then I want to tell on you. That's what that is. Like, hell yeah, Chris Paul. Tell, like, like Bamani Jones said, fucking tell on him. Yeah. Hell yeah. Fucking, because this is this is this is when it comes to like the fact that like healthy people are fucking dying, man. So like Yeah. Also, especially with like with athletes, it's like it, it this this disease, it doesn't it right, it only kills at like one percent, but it does leave a lot of people with uh, respiratory problems permanently. Yeah. So they, they're like, you're risking your entire career by going into this fucking bubble to begin with, you know? Yeah, like, I'm, for instance, I have mild symptoms. I lost taste and smell. But mm-hmm. I'm doing more research every day. That's neurological. Like, I could end up, like, that's a brain thing because of olfactory nerves, everything in, in the head. So, like, I could, a couple, few years from now, you know, I could have something related to strokes. Something like, you know, God forbid, hopefully none of that happens. But, like, you know, like, we don't know. Everything is too new. So when it comes to some shit like that, it's like, man, come on, man. Stop using these, like, weird mob mob terms for, it's like, snitching and crime when we're talking about people's just, like, plain regular health. Like, this is, mm-hmm. like, regular shit, man. It sucks. Yep. I, uh, I, I think uh, at the end of the day, I think we can try to get a league. We can try to get these leagues off, but um, one. I don't think it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's tough. Babies are being born with it in Texas. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. There's like 50 kids, babies with COVID. Whew. And y'all want to throw a football. If they survive, they're going to be the strongest babies on the planet. <laughs> We're going to have mutants, bro. <laughs> it's time. Yeah, I'm waiting for the superpowers, personally. I am yeah. also waiting for superpowers. Oh, yeah, you might, <laughs> you might get superpowers, Isaiah. Hey, man, listen, uh... We're always looking at the negatives, you know? We got to look at some of the positives. Mm -hmm. Maybe the antibodies make you stronger. So, um, we got got sports. Uh, I wanted to uh, kind of piggyback off of the the dunk craze in terms of resale and hype because uh, after you take your loss on Friday, uh, July 24th, on Saturday, July 25th, you can take your loss on the off-white Jordan 4. Oh yes. yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's just like the uh, it's just like the uh, in in May when you know you took your loss on the uh, the Ben and Jerry's and then you took your loss on the Travis Scott two seventies. It's like Nike is just like, well, you you know, fuck it, you're gonna lose uh, in twenty four hours. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I also lost th- twice. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing that, and I, I think, uh, you know, once again, this shoe is uh, it extended women's sizing, which, you know, it's a beautiful shoe. It's a great shoe. Yeah, it's really good. It's probably one of the best ones he's done. I, think I love, personally, I, like I love that. I like the, cl- the, the, the clear back tab is just like, yeah. it looks really, it looks really great. I mean, the details of it, while also while being kind of like, monotone and I, I I've, I've criticized Yeezys lately for being so much of that like no colors and just like having like all of those like just like these plants but this shoe like with that silhouette with Jordan 4 I mean just uh-huh. the fact that the, the, the details on the Jordan 4 are beautiful anyway like with the with the wings and how you can like 
you can have, add personality to that shoe by like we could wear the the wings out if you want. You could choose to lace them in. Mm -hmm. You could choose to not. Mm -hmm. And that's whole. That's a whole. And the way he kind of weaved it in with the the what y'all call what the Virgil aesthetic, which is ha like having like but of customizing things. And you can you can always customize the fit with a four crazy. And he did that and also did it just like cool. It's it's, it's man. I, can, I immediately when I saw that shoe, I was thinking about tonal color block and outfits. The fall. Yeah, bro. dude, it was, it, it's a it's a it's a nice shoe. But you like, put those on with like a with like a camel overcoat, you're king. Yeah, I'm I'm ready for I'm already ready for the L, but um, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna call as a as a stock owner at Nike. I'm gonna call the offices right. and be like, I'm a I'm an owner of this company. <laughs> I'm gonna give him a shot. This is the the first off white thing I'm actually gonna really shoot for. And yeah, what, this is the first one you're like actually excited for. I know, and then uh, I, one I want to wear. You know what I mean? Others yeah. I've been like, I'll try just to, for the resale, maybe. You know, mm -hmm. but like no effort. But just while we were talking, I texted my my guy over there. And I was like, Hey, did can I? Can you help me <laughs> with those? Is that possible? He's like, You know, um, I don't want to ask you for anything. No, I, I never ask him for shit, too. Yeah. Only, only shit I really want. Uh, he laughed at me about the Dior question, though, when I asked him, like, what's good <laughs> with the Dior's? But um, it's, it's the cleanest one he's done. It's the most simple. I would, I would love if I could scrape off the air on the side, because I don't care about that. Just, Get that yeah, out you here. could just do that. You totally could. I mean, Virgil would appreciate, would appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shit uh, holes in a box. I think that's what uh, it kind of – I mean, that – the air is part of the the off white look, like you know, because I, I feel like this is a colorway that you know I think Jordan could have done themselves, but with Virgil's little touches on it, I think it makes the shoe. It's a beautiful, like I said, it's a beautiful shoe, done well, um, and and I think you know it's gonna. This is gonna be one of those shoes that stay at. A, Four figures immediately like it's not going to go under four figures i think yeah i i doubt that it would too but you know what jordan would have jordan brand would have made this color but think about how they would have executed they would have put a jump man on the back they would have never put the night air mm -hmm. on the back of they course like you know what i'm saying so like because it's virgil he can do that just like with the off-white fives like he he can put the Nike Air in the back. He can deconstruct what he wants. Like they kind of let even with Travis, they let him. Like they were talking about it. I think on a, on the Complex show about how much free reign Nike was giving them with the shoe. They were like, "Did you push back when they wanted to flip the swoosh?" And they were like, "No, they just let us do whatever it is they want." So I think that's like the the difference um, with something like that. Like even um, Olivia Kim, like Olivia Kim, her her version of the black hats with the bovine hair. Mm -hmm. That's a dope, but it's just not, it's not off-white. So it's like, it doesn't yeah. really have that. But mm -hmm. even after the, 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 the what, the, the, the Last Dance documentary, even those went up. Those were going for like just about retail, like 200, 220. Right. But that's a dope Jordan 4 too. Like it that, was a great that, idea, a, yeah. Yeah, that's real bold on here on an all-black shoe with, the, with, with speckled, it has like a kind of a speckled like black Nike Air on the back. That's dope. But, you know. She's an Asian woman from New York, so nobody uh, really. Uh, really nobody cares. There's a nobody bunch cares. of them out nobody there. Cares. Yeah. I have, I have bad news. My plug just told me he got it for him, and that's the only one he can get. Oh, that's <laughs> so sad. I know. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're, <laughs> wow. They're, they're a beautiful shoe. Um, like I said, I'm looking for it. I mean, we, we, saw, we also saw images of an off white five. Uh, oh, the black, uh, the, the white pair, the white. The sail. Yeah. It's the it's the same color as the four. The sail. Yeah. Four, so yes. Those were rumored to be friends and family, maybe right? But then now there's just it's going to be a second drop. Uh, supposedly supposed to be the second drop. Uh, yeah. we don't know yet, but I mean, we we've seen images of those. It's uh, it, it's becoming it's. It, I gotta be honest with you. I like these better than I liked the the black four fives. I think the black fives sit on the white fives. And so maybe we haven't seen them on foot or we haven't seen, you know, we're seeing like leaked images, but I think the black pair is, is, is fucking really good. I just yeah, think that five with the holes in it sucks. Yeah, you don't like Don't the, punch the holes the hole. in my shoes. Let me do it myself. <laughs> 
but yeah, I, I don't. I, I think it's a cool looking shoe, the five. I just don't. I don't think it's worth what they are like that because of whether they around a thousand. I don't think it's worth that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's it's like fine. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm not too crazy about it. Yeah. Um, Lawrence, though, I want to talk about these shoes that you like. Um, these undercovers. Oh yeah, yes. I have no yeah. tummies. I have notes. I'm hoping you were gonna go here. I yeah. love them. Yeah. Well, it's just because uh, I don't know if the audience has picked up on it, but being in stores with Lawrence before and like discussing shoes with him, like, and the most surprising thing is that you love the Mars Yards. I don't think people would pin you as a Mars Yard guy, and I think this shoe falls within that category of you. But I, I just I don't see where like that love is in this shoe here. No, I, I think, think it's I think it's a I think it's a well I mean, maybe it, and that. Okay, I'll say this. The yeah. other colorways of that shoe, I do not really care for, but this sale colorway is done perfectly. And I think, you know, that black pair that you just showed that, that we saw, I don't really care for, but the sale colorway is that color, even that white and, uh, and black. I like that one. Yeah, the black really and white like pair is kind of nice too. Ooh, this is my favorite. Yeah, this gray This one red. sucks. This, no, this one's my it. least favorite so far. <laughs> I love that one. Are there more? No, it's just these four. But mm. these ones specifically are saying, so these like, uh, I guess we'll call them sale or khaki or whatever you want to, like uh, beige. Mm -hmm. I, the thing is though, Lawrence, is like, I can see you in them the same way I can see you in the Mars Yard. It's just like, like what about these is really doing it though? Because I, I'm, I, I personally, they're fine to me. Like I don't have, it stands, but the sole is weird. But then I read that it's a Ipsa soul. Like this is a collab with yeah. that. Yes. With yes. Yeah. So I'll then like, I was like, I'll oh, go, okay. I got, a lot of I got a lot of thoughts about these, but like I'll go first because you know. No, nah, Isaiah, go ahead. What were you gonna say, man? Oh man, I, I okay. So ever since ISPA came out in 2018, I love like where they uh, just like just the the weirdness of all the ISPA shoes. Mm -hmm. um, and the recent ones, I didn't, see, this is the whole thing too. Everything is selling out because um, I think it's like, there's not a lot of retail stores open. Um, so even the ISPA, the recent ones that had that, that debuted this like brain looking React sole, which is the over, the, what they call it, over React. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of React because I like function and, and, and comfort and stuff like that. Um, so I love the bottom of this shoe. Also, I also own um, some June Takahashi's. I love the rose detail. Yep. I just think that's like pretty fun and classy. Nice. I, I, I love that. I have the um, the Zoom flies with the uh, with with the rose on them that nobody really cared about. I got them, you know, at retail whenever I wanted at my leisure. Um, I thought that the the even the um, the the boot version of uh, some stuff that he had. I, I like the collabs that he has. Um, I don't always like the color schemes of, of a lot of the ones so like you know there's always a few duds but i think the sale is uh probably the best one but i do also like that gray and red one um weird but like this soul man um and from what i've heard i haven't tried it on or anything yet because you can't you know there's no stores but oof I, I i love how i love weird shoes and i love how weird uh this one i like how that soul is like a brain it's fucking dope it's very cool Speaking of of, uh, of weird shoes, and, and I guess, I don't know, if, you know, maybe we should save it or we'll, we'll talk about it now. Isaiah was uh, lucky enough to get the... Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. All right, so... Uh, well, I'm, I'm traumatized. Say, I'm oh, traumatized. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Before, we, <laughs> before we get in there, Isaiah was lucky enough to get the Space Hippie, uh, the, the volume three, the third one of in the OG colorway. The best which is, ones. Which is the best one? Um, before we're we, in right now. <laughs> before we get into that, Isaiah, let's. Uh, what do you, is the shoe? It's a comfortable shoe, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, nice colorway. Very, uh, you know, you know. Obviously, you you uh, you messaged me. You wanted to know about what I thought about the shoe, and I, you know, I told you I liked that you were debating on on if you should keep or sell. Obviously, you kept. Uh, but what has transpired in the last couple of days since I <laughs> got in the shoes is, I, I mean, I, once again, I wasn't the recipient of this picture, but Chris, uh, happened to be the, the lucky, 
a person who uh, got a picture of Isaiah sitting down. Where hold he, up, yo, I can't, let me. Let me. So, <laughs> I love Isaiah more than I love most people. He's very <laughs> genuine. He's an honest dude. We have good conversation, right? So when my, my, my man hits me, he's like, yo, this heat's crazy. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yo, so what are you doing about the heat? Doing a little double entendre there, you know, like, he's setting himself up. He's, he knows what he's doing. He's like, yo, what you do about the heat? So then he sends me a picture of what he thinks is just of his space hippies. For me yeah. to then get this belly button picture. <laughs> Jeez. He was trying to flex on me in his underwear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'm quick I'm quick on the send trigger. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. You know the, the camera the, the phones got uh wide angle. They got like wide angle. <laughs> they got wide angle lenses on them now. And I didn't really know it was a belly button pick. Yeah, I, I you know. <laughs> I mean, you, you know. on your face. Look at Lawrence's face. Lawrence got the Will Smith face on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, "How could you do this to us, man?" I mean, I mean I gotta leave it. I gotta leave it there. Yeah, take it off, <laughs> Chris. Take it off, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Christ. Audio listeners, we're at the post it on the Patreon or something. I don't. I don't know. Jesus, I was don't excited now. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, if the man man was excited, man was excited. Uh, I don't know if that's a picture you want to send to another dude, but you know, I mean, this is 2020. Weirdest shit has happened. Um, it's that's true. what I'm saying. I mean, I, I look. I did look at it after the fact and was like, oh damn, he probably gonna, like, <laughs> he probably gonna say like some shit for that. But um, at the same time, I was just like, I mean, what? I mean, you know, it's you've been to the beach, right? You really. You said you followed it with a pause, though. <laughs> yeah, you hit send saw, on that, I, yeah, then hit well, well, then wrote pause and sent it to me. Uh, well, because then no, I need to write know, pause first. You wrote it out. Well, because there's, there's my level of what is like whatever. You know, I, I guess I'm, I don't know, man. I, I haven't been socializing a lot in the last few months. <laughs> I guess, you know, it is what it is. But like, yo. I, yeah, then I seen it. I was like, "Oh, he's gonna take this wrong," and I was like, "He's just gonna pause." Take... <laughs> so I said, "Pause." Lawrence's <laughs> <Lord's laughs> face through this whole discussion. <laughs> hey, you like the shoe? You like the shoe? You send the picture. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna uh, send I'll you that same exact moment. picture, Chris. If I if I win the the SB Don't, no. Dead. <laughs> no, I'm cool. I'm cool. Second now it's going to be a trend. With, with, with the listeners of this pot, watch the Discord now. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's going to start. It's going to be a thing. Everybody's Check the what did you wear tab. Thing. It's going to be all yeah, that picture. It's going to be all It's going to be all that that same view. It has and Lawrence flies really, ass. Yeah, he's really going to leave. He's never going to go to Discord again. Like, Lawrence going like, chill. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you know, just when I went in there, now I got to leave. You know, like, oh, oh my God. Oh, uh, that shit is very hey, funny. That's very Holy funny. shit. Um, hey, the, I, I didn't, by the way, nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. It's a little hard to get the shoe on. Yeah. But dude, it, it's honestly, if I, I, I'm, I hate that it's a little so limited. I wish I could like have it for like years to come. I know I'm gonna wear the shit out of them. So like, I, yeah. I wish I could like ha have a few pairs of them, kind of like the way like like an Air Max One or something that you really like love and classic dude. I, I like, I love it. Um, You're really making great. me consider trading my Zoom Racer, my uh, my Racer Blues, the fake Dior's. You're making me consider right. trading those in for for a pair of Space Hippies. I mean, you'd have to add some cash probably, but I, no, I think they're they're going for 400 right now. So oh really? It's about it's yeah. about a one to one. Oh, I, then I would get I rid think, of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah get I rid of those should. for sure. I think you should if you could get the really? with the orange hits with the orange <laughs> hits on it and so, dude, I think. It, it's a great, like I said, it's a great shoe. It doesn't, as far as like, as far as uh, the practicality of it, I think the lacing system, even though it looks like floss and it looks real delicate, um, it works. Like it works really good. It's not satisfying. But like like uh, Chris, you, you you have another uh, pair of shoes with a similar lacing system. It, it, oh I yeah, Jordan imagine, 33. Right, right. So I can't imagine that it's it probably is like the similar thing. Also, Flying it, I've always been a fan of it. It's so breathable. Like I said, I've been wearing it on some of the hottest days, 
and my feet haven't been getting like super like hot and sweaty and I've been wearing them around. I wore, I went for a really long walk in them. From I walked from Coney Island Beach back to Flatbush in them and it, feel, it, it was great, dude. And it was like, man, it's, it's a, I've never, I've never felt like such a, I feel like I'm a tougher critic with like 10 out of 10 type of thing. But like, yeah, aside from getting the shoe on is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Once you get past that, it's, it's dope. That's what's up. Damn. Okay. <clears throat> I think that we we can kind of pull this to a close here. Um, I do want to start a new segment. Uh, Isaiah, you're going to love this. Uh, just because we talk about the shoes all the time on the podcast. Obviously, the whole premise of this is to talk about streetwear and clothes and sneakers. But we don't actually kind of point out, like, hidden gems that people could like because they're not hype. Everyone's just buying hype because Nike sells us hype. But we should be recommending maybe stuff that's not in necessarily like the general news cycle of these sneaker uh, shops or blogs. So like, I just want to start like this like hypeless heat, I guess, segment where like one mm. I particularly like is these represent shoes, these Raptors. I mean, I got a couple that I'm going to do, I think week by week. I know uh, uh, Luke, you sent us one earlier, but like, yeah. I just like these shoes. They're, they look clean, they're nice, and they're not breaking your bank. The 300 bucks, which is now like a reasonable price for good sneakers. And I'm sure these guys, I, I, I haven't seen these in person. I've seen them only on Instagram and FitPix, and I, I just really like them. I don't know exactly what this brand's all about, but I know I like this shoe specifically, so I just want to give them a show. I like the black hits on it. It works. They got a couple of different colorways. It's just, it just this, this is one of those sneakers that, like, it's not Jordan, but it's got, like, the, enough Jordan – qualities to it where like you could see it's based off of one the shape pretty yeah. easily and it's got its own mm -hmm. little flair and it separated itself enough from the pack where it holds on its own like and i love the stitching i don't know if they did it on purpose if it looks like it says ep mm -hmm. which i like i said i don't know if it's on purpose but i just like these guys these are cool i i think they definitely give me uh court force jordan one super vibes man it's uh, yeah yeah yeah, it's not Wait. a bad. It's not a bad looking shoe. I like. The, I, this is a weird thing to point out, but I like. I kind of like how fat the laces are. Yeah, yeah. It works on these. Luke, what was the one you sent earlier too? I sent. Um, what do you call it? Where are they? At two eighty eight, I think it's a little steep though. But mm -hmm. no, it is steep. But I mean, it's not. It's not ridiculous compared to some of these other th shits. You know what I mean? Uh, I sent a pair of Y three lows. The top FYS 97. Uh, Y3 lows F97. Uh, let me see. E F Y S 97. So the reason I like these shoes in particular is because if you're ever looking for like a, a pair of black shoes, uh, black sneakers, maybe go a little bit outside, maybe a little bit outside of the box. I like Y3s a lot just because of their, like they have like a very wavy design to them. They're very unique. Yeah, Y3s style. are dope. Yeah, Y3s are great. And these are actually They're on modern sale right ninja. now. These They're are like modern, 220, exactly. Yeah. You can run around feeling like Naruto in them. And you, for the most part, they're very comfortable too. Like the tubular design from the original pairs of the Casas is what kind of inspired like kind of jump started Adidas's new push towards like the boost material and all that. So I'm a big fan of, of shoes like this. And this one in particular, it's just it's just a nice black shoe for around like a 220 retail. Yeah. And you can walk into an Adidas store and buy them and walk out and exactly. wear them whatever you want, which is great. Exactly. That's and for Y three that this is affordable. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Very affordable shoe. I like I like Y three. Um, also, I don't know who needs to hear that out there. I just want to use this little moment to say, like, if you're wearing Adidas sweatpants with Jordans, I mean, just stop doing that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We we haven't really actually addressed like the Nike socks, but Adidas Stan Smiths on the feet issue that people are doing. Oof. But yeah, it's, it's that's a, a cardinal sin. Yeah. I was trying to explain this to my mom, actually, because she was wearing Nike socks with Reeboks. And I was like, just wear the Reebok socks with the Reebok shoes. And she's like, why? Wow, they're socks. You can't see them. But I'm like, all right. I mean, if you want to look like, if you want to be that lady. All right. Cool. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think she's invested in the sneaker game quite as much as you are. No, but I'm, tr I'm trying to teach the elderly, you know? 
they gotta learn sometime. Listen, just just tell, sketchy Mike. He's big on that. Just he's in the Discord. Tell him, yo, Mike, I love you, man. <laughs> Stop us. You, you, it's just the logos are too competing. It's like not even. It's not even the business part. It's the fact that you got a stripe. And you got a swoosh. Uh, yeah, I will. I call it. I, look, it's because we love Mike. We do it out of the love. Oh, shout out, Mike. Shout out, Sketchy shout Mike. Out Ske Sketchy Mike 90, man. Shout, shout, shout oh, out to him. The full good, handle. Good, good <laughs> fits. Bad socks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. It's all love. It's I, all love, Sketchy. I think, uh, I think we can put a button on this one. Do you have any final thoughts, guys? No, everybody stay safe out there. That's all. Yeah, stay safe, y'all. Yeah, man, wash your hands, stay safe. It's all good, you know. Love y'all. <laughs> Yo, I say, I say your shit on Sketchy Mike by name, but also sent me that photo. Jesus. <laughs> I had, I had, I, I, but I, I didn't he have had great any socks on. Great socks. So. He had great socks on. I looked at the socks. I don't know what you were looking at, Chris, but I was looking at the socks. <laughs> Okay. I, that's why I love you, Luke. <gasps> <sighs> all right. That's it. We'll see you guys next week, all right? Yeah. All right, all right. y'all.